drama and chaos. And For more than one year, I snorted just a tiny little bit. Meth and the quest for the next high. I didn't think it was a big deal. Controlled Denell Rogers' life. Four days later, I realized, wow, I'm still awake. Now in recovery, one of Denell's most vivid addiction memories was driving way too fast on the expressway at all hours to get more meth. The drug left her feeling invincible. You could take on anybody. Uh, you really don't ever have to sleep. You don't eat. You're constantly running. At first, Denell's story was one we've commonly come to know. She was on opioids after a medical issue left her in constant pain. When the relief was not enough, she turned to meth, never imagining she'd become an addict to such a dangerous drug. Because in less than a year of doing meth, uh, I almost lost my house. My husband just about left. My mom had to take my daughter. My health was failing all from a drug that was once prominent here until opioids took over a few years ago. The I-team has learned meth is now back on top, flooding Miami Valley streets with more than enough supply to meet demand. But this new meth source and potency has changed. Just 10 years ago, people were using old buildings like this burned out house to make their own meth to use it or sell it on the street, but not so much anymore because it's coming from another country. Much of it is from Mexico. Border Patrol agents find all kinds of drugs being shipped here, a lot of it hidden in cars and trucks. And you can see the size of this meth shipment found at the border in El Paso, Texas. Montgomery County Sheriff Rob Strzok says the drug cartels reintroduced meth to the mix of drugs being sold here at home after authorities focus so much enforcement on opioids and now they can ship it here for cheaper than what somebody can turn around and make it in their parents' garage or in their basement or wherever they're driving around, and it's much safer just to buy it as opposed to how dangerous it is to make. Drug task forces say meth never really went away completely, but with opioids no longer the top drug of choice, and meth so cheap now, they're seeing more usage than ever before. What scares you the most about meth? Just the... The availability of it. We have seen a huge spike in it. I think between 2016 and 2017, we saw a 1400% increase in the amount of meth that, that we seize from the street. Investigators bring it here to the Montgomery County Crime Lab for testing. With a coroner, Dr. Kent Harshbarger finds it's often mixed with other drugs like fentanyl. The impact on the body is overwhelming. The first use of meth, someone can die from a cardiovascular event from that stimulant component. So there's an acute risk every time someone uses cocaine or methamphetamine, but methamphetamine carries that over time destruction of the body. Records obtained by the I-Team show among accidental drug overdose deaths, the cases where meth was involved in Montgomery County have risen from just 1% in 2010, up to 29% in fatal overdoses in 2018. National Centers for Disease Control numbers follow the same path headed higher every year. Montgomery County Alcohol, Drug Addiction and Mental Health Services Associate Director Jody Long says it leaves the community fighting yet another type of drug crisis. First, we have to talk about prevention and continue offering prevention um, from very young ages to, to really prevent people from developing addiction to start with. All rise, please. What did it take for Denell to move from meth to recovery? She ended up here in Montgomery County's drug court after being caught cashing a bad check. And then when I got that summons for court, I was like this, wow, this is, I probably should try to stop. You're gonna have to bear down, right, and, and get through it. It was a chance to get help. In court, women get the support they need to stay off of drugs. Some are kept in jail and treated there. Others are released for outside treatment. We saw the judge leave the bench to give one woman a hug of encouragement. And there's even a therapy dog to help out. After going to drug court, Danelle Rogers has been clean ever since. With her family's support, she now has her life back. I just wouldn't have it any other way. You know, and I say all the time that even my worst days now are far better than my best days then. She's also working with the group Families of Addicts, FOA, to spread the word that recovery does work. Vitally important, she feels, as meth resurgence takes a hold on the Miami Valley. For the I-Team, Jim Otte, New Center 7.